Welcome to Lynx. In this video presentation, we're going to build a very simple API that'll make data available to our organization. We're going to connect to a database, extract the data from that database, and then make the data available via our API endpoints. There's going to be two endpoints. One endpoint to list all customer data and another one to search for specific customer records. Although this presentation focuses only on databases, you can connect to any data source. That includes data lakes, data warehouses, files, and even other APIs. You can also combine different data sources to enrich your data. Let's begin. This is the Lynx Designer. The Lynx Designer has a similar look and feel to a modern day IDE. Over here, we've got our solutions. Over here, we'll build our functions, which is essentially our processes. We do that by dragging in functions, which is essentially the building blocks of our process. Lynx works with what we call plugins. Plugins are pre-created code blocks, which allows us to implement quickly. For this specific demo, I'm going to install the database plugin as well as the REST plugin. Because we want to create and host an API, I'm going to use the simple REST host service. This service allows me to create an API by using a wizard instead of using OpenAPI 3.0 specification. We need to define our base URI and then our operations. The operations will essentially become our endpoints. These operations are 100% configurable by you and you can create as many as you need. A popular use case is to create a CRUD API, create, read, update, delete, that allows a holistic interaction with any database. I've opted to create two operations, one to retrieve all clients and another one to search for a specific client or list of clients. You can set security anywhere that you want via API key or HTTP bearer token. Another important feature is that Lynx can host API documentation for us. I'm going to go ahead and turn on Swagger UI documentation hosting as we will be using it in this presentation. Now we can see our two operations and we can now add the functionality into them. These operations, as mentioned before, will become our endpoints. For this presentation, we're going to be using data out of the Adventure Works database. We're specifically interested in the sales.v individual customer view. In Lynx, we can simply drag and drop a execute SQL function. This will allow us to interact with our database. Here, we can select SQL Server, Oracle, OLEDB, or any ODBC source. This makes it so that we can connect to any database of our choosing. Now we need to set up our connection. Once those values are filled in, we can test our connection to the database and then simply click OK. To access the data in the database, we're going to use SQL scripts. This SQL script can be as complicated or as simple as we need it to be. Lynx also has the functionality to generate basic SQL scripts for us. Once our SQL is created, we can also test it to see what the result will be. Here we can see the data that we're going to work with. We have multiple options here. We can either iterate through each item or simply retrieve the entire list of rows. Next, we need to return the result in a response body. To do this, I'm simply going to use a return function. I'm going to set that to be the value that we retrieved from our execute SQL function. For a search client's endpoint, we're going to have a very similar scenario than the previous one, except now we're going to allow for values to be passed in that will filter our clients out. Lynx has a very high degree of reusability, meaning we can reuse elements previously configured. This is not just true for functions, but for anything in Lynx. To do this, I can simply copy the execute SQL function and paste it into my search client's operation. You can also execute any SQL query, meaning you have a high degree of flexibility. To filter for a specific list of clients, I'm simply going to make an adjustment to my SQL statement. The query parameters that we specified on the outside is available in the parameters list here. I can simply double click on one and that'll bring it in. This means that we can now filter for a specific client via business entity ID, first name, last name or phone number. And here's our end result. Now we can test this. Note that these parameters are fully created and set by you, meaning you have full control. And there we go. We get all clients that has the name John. After our SQL has been defined, we again need to return a value to our response body. Now we can test our API. To do this, simply click on the debug button, click on start, and Lynx will create a locally hosted version of our API to test. 
I'm going to use the API documentation to test my API. This is what the Swagger API documentation looks like. You can simply click on try it out, execute, and there's a list of all our clients. If you require your API to have pagination, that can also be implemented. You can also make this documentation available to your clients, giving them an overview of your API and how to use it. In links, we can see that these two operations has fired. The data is currently coming through as a string. If we wanted it to be a little bit more neat, we can set it to be a JSON object. To do this, I'm simply going to create what we call a type. Types are essentially how data is managed in links. It's a visual representation of a JSON object. There are multiple different ways to create a type. You can manually create a type, or you can import it. Importing a type allows you to import an existing JSON object, JSON schema XML, or XML schema. I'm simply going to import a JSON object that resembles what we want to display. And now our type has been created. Now all I need to do is come in here, for get clients, we want to see a list of clients. And the same is true for search client. You can modify and enhance existing solutions even if they have already been deployed. You can simply redeploy something if you've made a change. Now if we debug this, we will see a much better output when we test it. We can also use something like Postman to test our API. Once we're happy with our API, we can deploy it to a link server. A link server will host the API for us, take care of all monitoring and logging. When ready, we can deploy our solution by clicking on the deploy button. Here we can deploy our solution to any of our available servers. You can have multiple servers, for example, one for development, one for testing, and one for production. When ready, we can simply turn on our REST host. Now the API is ready to be called by clients. We can use something like Postman again to test. Our response is coming through clear. And on the server, we can now see that the API endpoints has each been called. The link server will host our API, making it available to any application that need to access it at any given moment. The link server will also take care of security, monitoring and logging. Most modern tools and applications are able to interact and digest REST APIs, meaning that they will easily be able to access your data through this new API that you've created. That concludes this video presentation on building an API to access data via links.